Hi, and welcome back to the Tone Bar Channel. Since the last video a week ago, one week ago, thank y'all. I've been busy. The reason I've been posting videos because I've been busy filling orders. Okay? They're going out every state. I showed my state map, uh, uh, America map, and now they're going everywhere. Thanks to y'all. Uh, a week ago, a week ago, I had 11,000 views on all my videos, on all of them, and I had 139 subscribers. I don't even know if I know 39 people, but that's what it is. But thanks to you guys, and whoever blowed this up, or is my titles getting the message across, I've gotten almost 40,000 hits on my YouTube channel. 684 subscribers. I'm humbled. I, I don't. I really don't know what to say. But 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 you're saying it because you're ordering them. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, I didn't write. I didn't script this. I didn't write nothing down. Uh, and there's a and then to, to we're gonna go through, we're gonna go over this the fundamentals of the tone bar and then today I got a guitar that that's a you know needs to be completely redone not redone but need to be restrung it's got pins in it and I'm gonna play it for you and then I'm gonna uh, take the strings off clean it up show you how to properly clean your guitars according to Danny Earlywine he's the master. This is from the Guitar Player Repair Guide. And then install the tone bar to last. So so if you're watching this video, when I play the guitar, after I show you these models again, and go, go over this again, and there's some stuff that, that there's, you know, there's, I heard Taylor uh, singing today, and uh, the haters want to hate. They're going to hate, hate, hate. But the guitar players want to play, play, play. And that's, the, and, that, and that's what's really going on, okay? So, um, um, so let's go over the fundamentals. Thank you to everybody that's buying them. I'll, I'm out of stock on Reverb, and I am ending my listing on Reverb because uh, Reverb requires a tracking number when you sell something, so they can um, uh, pay you when the you know it's, the, the, the carrier has it and it's it's being tracked. But my little device just ships in a little bitty you know, a little bitty manila envelope with no tracking, and it goes first class mail. Well, I have to wait until the buyer receives it and then has to mark his page as received or they won't release my funds. So it's, it's, a, it's a little longer process, but uh, we're on eBay. I can fill out your, you know, fill out your package and fill your order and mark it shipped, and then boom. Then, then they they, 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 they they consider that being shipped. They don't need a tracking number because a lot of things small, you don't need a. Tra I mean, there ain't no tracking number. I mean, I'm selling so cheap, I can't afford to to you know to sell you one and pay shipping and then pay a dollar to you to get one. Okay, I just I'm not going to do that. I'd rather just shut it all down. But anyway, no more reverb, all eBay. I sold out on Reverb, so I'm going to fill all those orders and let that money, you know, funnel through. And then, uh, if I'm going to contact them and see if we can work something out with just a market shipped click or something, because that their system's a little archaic. But it's better for good stuff. Reverb is good for big stuff where you got tracking and all that kind of stuff. This is a small little package. It's just a guitar accessory, and. Uh, I want to answer uh, some of the critics, you know, the, all the haters, but I, I, I got answers for all that, and the only ones that are hating is the ones that don't have it. Okay, so let, let's let's start at the beginning here. I'm going to start with these models again, and I'm going to point out some something to you, some, some some things to you. Okay, this is what you're doing now. This is what you got right now with with pins. When you put pins in your guitar. 
This is what it looks like underneath. See that? I wash these back and I'm gonna try to hold it as still as I can. All right, let's just do this. Okay, now, just like with this model, just like with this model, see where the little outlines are? That's where the, the, the ball ends. I traced around them where the ball ends were touching the bridge plate. Okay, and then this is the, the wire for your pickup. If you had a pickup in there, the tone bar doesn't get in the way of any pickups, so we let's, let's, that's another thing people have been talking about. Okay, and uh, the fact that um, I call I, you know I called uh, this method of putting strings in helter skelter, but what I mean about the helter skelter is is that if you'll notice this ball in let's see let's get over here I'll show you this one get my microphone over here. That ain't working out too good. Whoop. Okay. What we're looking at here, if you if you can see this, this ball in here, I'm gonna use this pointer here to, to show you where the where the ball in. If you suck something through the hole on that ball into that string, that that that's facing this way. If you put it in the second string, it's facing this way. If you put it in this third string, it's facing that way. If, if you put a, a, a straight line in the ball into that string, it's facing that way. That one's facing that way and digging a hole into the, your bridge plate, which happens a lot because your, your ball ends wall are out the holes at the bottom because the pins are forcing them up against there. And when you tighten the string up, the ball end is trying to come up through your guitar and, and messing up your bridge plate. And wall or not your hose. This one here is facing this way. Now, what do I mean by all that? What does that mean? What does that mean? What that means is, all right, let's get back up here so I can talk to you. What that means is, and what one of my contentions is with the tone bar, is that when you put your strings back on, when you restring your guitar, you have no idea how these ball ends are going to end up. I've tried to put a ball in in this bridge, holding the bridge in my hand and pulling the string through, and it just turns however which way it wants to. That one's turned this way, this way, or this way. This one's turned sideways. So all your ball ends just they find their own spot underneath the bridge, underneath the bridge, and you cannot repeat that. That's what I'm trying to tell everybody is with a with with pins that ball in. You know, you you you're stringing it up and it's spinning around in there and it just lands wherever it wants to land, and then that's what you're stuck with. And you got the pins jamming it in there and you string it up and then. They're slowly eating the end of your the end inside of your of your uh, bridge plate. Okay, see how them ball ends are all pointing different ways. That's the way it is every time you change the strings. They're always pointing a different way. Now let's get to the tone bar. I'll use this as an example. When you well, we'll do it. let's do it with this. When you put a tone bar, when you install the tone bar system and method in your guitar, all your ball ends line up the way they was wound on the machine at the factory. This is not pulling up tight because it's they're not up to tension. It's just a model. Okay, so all your ball ends are lined up the same way 
every time. You get perfect, repeatable string changes. You don't have to worry about whether your your ball ends or chewing your inside your bridge plate up. That doesn't that that is not even a factor with a tone bar. All of your ball ends are lined up the way they were wound on the machine. The tone bar does that. The tone bar is what's contacting the bridge plate to give you more tone and more vibration and more and more uh, um, just your, it makes your guitar sound better. It's just it's just the physics of it. But you get you get repeatable string changes. I've heard some people say, "Well, I changed my strings last month, man, they sound good. I changed this month, didn't sound that good." It's cause you have no way of knowing or seeing or even caring because it's out of the way and you don't see it that your ball ends are just helter skelter like I told like I said before but you know you people you say something and they take it take it all weird okay so with a tone bar you get constant repeatable perfect string changes because all the ball ends are lined up through the tone bar and that's the beauty of it, you know, when you put a tone bar in, you never have to mess with pins no more. And then when you change the system, then when you, I'll take all these pins out of here. And when you have a tone bar in your guitar, uh, When you have a tone bar in your guitar, okay, see that? When you have a tone bar in your guitar and you, and it's, you know, it's in there like that, and then when you let the tension off the strings, it just falls down inside the guitar, you just pull it out, bend the little end down, slide the strings off, stick the string down in the hole, Pull it up through the sound hole, new set of strings, slide them all on, each through each hole, and pull it up like a ponytail. What we're going to do right here, right now. This is that other model I had. This is just a, a guitar with the, with the insides cut out. See that? Now, when you, when you change strings, look there, it just falls down. You cut the strings off and pull it right back out. Go right back up there. Look at that. Contact. Lots of contact. So so when you when you change strings, it's easier. You just take the tension off the strings. Boom. It just falls out. You, uh, you know, bend the other end. And then we're going to do this again. Show you the... strings on we bent this in you don't have to bend it up to a total 90 just bend it up enough so the strings don't slide off because in the experimenting and the developing developing of this if you don't have that bend on that end and you let go of this thing them strings are going to fly off and then you're starting all over so like I said hold it like that grab just like a ponytail and you can just kind of let it go and pull it up through and boom, it just goes into place. See that? It's not hurting the bridge plate. It's not doing nothing. So that's how you install the, the tone bar. And another thing I want to say that I heard or that was spoken of Well, I'm new at this, okay? I ain't, I'm not no, you know, YouTube. I'm, I'm a YouTuber now, but but I, I'm doing this to promote this product because this needs to be out there. And the response I'm getting is, don't don't listen to me. Watch my feedback on eBay. 
the customers, the real customers, are going to tell you whether this works or not. And I've already had so many customers tell me it's already works. I'm not even worried about them. Well, the haters can hate, but the players are going to play. Okay, now. One, and I and I took this guy's. I mean, I, all the criticism I've been getting, I take it. And if it's if it's worthwhile, I'll, I'll you know I'm cool with that. I'm not I'm not mad about nothing. That's that's somebody said I was defensive, but I'm just you know I ain't done this before. So you get a bunch of stupid people talking stupid crap. You just kind of want to you know throw the mud back at them. But okay, all right, all right. I know I'm no I'm I'll, I'll leave it alone. But uh, what what I'm uh, I said all I'd say this when. You list a video on YouTube, I just hit made for kids just because, you know, kids, I'm not saying nothing, you know, ornery or nothing. I might cuss a little bit, but I mean, but I click uh, made for kids and that act turns off the comments. I didn't realize that. So some people have said, well, why do you turn the comments off on your videos? Well, I didn't know that that's how it worked. So when you made it not for kids, the comments come on. And my daughter, you know, told me, said, "Dad, you gotta let you gotta let people comment." I said, "Well, I, I don't know where the button's at, but when you hit my, made for kids, turns comments off." And then I also heard, you know, around the campfire, that somebody says something real stupid or whatever that you can get in trouble for because it's your channel. So I don't want no. No, no crap like that going on. So that's, that's, but that's, it was just a benefit of hitting that made for kids button. Okay, so thank you to everybody. This is this is this is getting crazy out of hand. I ain't got thirty nine. I ain't got forty thousand tone bars. I make it. Okay, now here's another thing. I'm getting off reverb. I'm putting them on eBay. I can make probably a hundred and fifty a week. So. I'm going to choke this down to 150 a week and give me time to make them, package them. You know, I run out of envelopes, I run out of, I run out of bags, I run out of instruction sheets, I run out of everything, and I even run out of tone bars and I had to go, go make some. So, but I can make one in a minute. All you DIY guys, I can make one of these in, a, in less than a minute, and they're perfect every time because I, I used to work in engineering, and I, anybody, any of you guys that can make anything that's beautiful. But I know how to make a million things exactly like. That's the difference. Now, another thing about the tone bar, it's effective. It's uh, it's cheap. It's uh, it's okay. Another guy, another criticism. We'll say that. Uh, well, uh, you're you're wrong about you know. Uh, bridge, you know, an alternative to putting strings on guitars hadn't changed in 180 years, because I don't know when they come out with top load bridges or all kind of other stuff, and that's and that's 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 correct, I stand corrected, but what I'm saying is bridge pins have been in place for 180 years, and there's no alternative to bridge pins, except making a guitar that doesn't have pins that are installed in it. Yeah, you can have a top load bridge, but is that an is that an alternative to pins? No, it's a different bridge system. So y'all are, you know, this apples and oranges things. Y'all need to, you know, do a little critical thinking. This is a better method. And everybody said, well, you know, I, I did that way back in the day. And but what I've done is I've made it simple. I made something that's simple, repeatable affordable and something that anybody can install so this is this is what the deal is it's 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 a simple device that works and it can be put in any any guitar it don't you have to buy somebody's fancy top load bridge and I guarantee it it won't sound as good as your guitar with a tone bar in it take it in there and show it to them any guitar dealers you put a tone bar in any acoustic guitar you got hanging on the wall, that's the first guitar you'll sell. Guarantee it. Okay, now what we got today is, enough of the hype. Now, like I said, I'm going to play this guitar and then skip to the end of the video because I'm going to leave this video run. This video may run for a half an hour because i got to put strings on this guitar. So uh, what, we, what we got here is a, hang on just a second. 
is a this is a neighbor's guitar. He's he's uh, he's been a fan of this and, and seen it from the from, from the inception. And um, I mean, he's his his guitar was the guitar that I put the twelve that I did the twelve string on. That I put the two double tone bars in, in a twelve string. That was his guitar. He's my neighbor. Okay, what he brought me today is, this is a cheap Epiphone. This is, this is the DR100. That's probably one of the cheapest Epiphones they make. And this thing's real dirty. It's real dirty. Let's see if you can see that. The strings, the bottom two strings bottom two strings or the fingerboards filthy the you know it's got the bridge pins in it see that it's got bridge pins in it I'm going to convert this to a tone bar after I clean it up it's just filthy and this this start now is the uh, hang on a second it is you know if you find a a guitar at a thrift shop or a flea market and you want to fix it up this is the proper way to fix your guitar so we're going to play this thing first and then uh, and then I'm going to start cleaning it up all right so this and we're just going to play some chords on it and I use this the thinnest mar, uh, thinnest Dunlop 46 millimeter see that 46 millimeter and that's got a compensated bridge on see it's kind of it's got the offsets got the offsets for compensation okay this is the before test and this don't sound bad now Okay, uh, this video was too uh, long to load off of my iPad, so I'm going to fast forward through a little bit of okay. this. We'll do we'll do a little we'll do a little uh, well we'll let that play. we'll get to that part and let that play. Chosen, he likes elixirs. So we're gonna put some elixirs, 53 to 12s on here. These are 80-20 bronze nano web coating. Got the nano web coating on them. All right. With the tone bar, you can actually. Okay, here we go. We got tuner issues. But. Um, and I've been really busy shipping these things out. And um, so there's going to be a lot of feedback coming on eBay here very, very soon. I've already got a whole lot of feedback on eBay from these, so I'm not, 
I'm just con- I just like what what a new person's opinion of it is. Everybody describes, and now then we're going to do this. Just cut them off. All right, now we're going to see how hard it is to get these bridge plates out, these bridge pins out of here. Let me get these strings off here. All right, I'll just throw this down for. All right, so now we're gonna see how hard it is to get these bridges. Some of them just pop right out. That just pop right out. Now it's it's possible. I'm gonna say it's possible. And I get, I'm getting all this string breakage. I don't know how, why people are, are so scared of breaking strings, or why they're breaking the strings. All right. There's the, there's the, there's the ball ends on this one. They're just all rusty. No good. I think Linda Ronstadt said it best. You're no good. You're no good. Okay, now what I use to clean a guitar with is I thought I had it here. Hang on. A jug is like three, four bucks when you can get a whole a gallon of naphtha for 10, you know. So you just put, and the naphtha just breaks down all the, all the junk, all the dirt on it, loosens it up so you can clean it up. And I'll put a little guitar polish on when I get all this. I want the guitar polish. Okay, now this is another thing I need to show you. Tape it off. You tape everything off but the frets, and then you shine the frets up, and then you peel all the stuff off. But this is, the, you put the lighter fluid on there, and it kind of loosens up the dirt. So then you just, you just scrape it. That gets all the gunk off there. The lighter fluid, the naphtha loosens it up. And then you go back and scrape it. It gets all the finger gunk back off. It gives you a nice little, a nice, uh, fresh surface of wood to, uh, For your for your fingerboard, and then there's lots of stuff you can put on your fingerboard. Like I use, uh, I used to use lemon oil. Some people use um, olive. Um, I've heard some people use it olive oil, but I put olive oil on my upright strings. That's what that's that's what they're used for. And you can start seeing it. You all the all the crap's coming off. All of the finger gunk. All the sweat. This, every time you get a guitar, you do this, and you'll get all them, all that junk off of it, all somebody else's gunk, and then when you play it, it'll be your gunk on there. So uh, I want to thank everybody for the comments they're making. There's, you know, they're calling it all kind of good things. And like I said, the haters are going to hate, but I've had so many good comments. The only comments I want to address is the ones I did. I, I didn't turn the comments off because I, and then you, and then you use four odd sandpaper, four zeros. And this cleans, this shines your frets up. Get your frets all shiny, right? Like, I, like it was new. Okay, you do that. Then I just use mineral oil. That's just a little squeeze bottle with mineral oil in it. And then you just (coughs) 
put a little bit in each fret. Okay. And just take your little rag, put your finger in there. Man, you can start seeing that wood grain pop now. So this is just regular old mineral oil, mineral oil, or oil, or, or. And for a minute. All right now. Now. I want you to look at that fingerboard now. Look at the wood grain in it. You see the wood grain. Nice old rosewood fingerboard. All the frets are shiny now. All the dirt's off of it. Okay. So this is just a one of the cheapest Epiphones that they make. It's a it's a D100. It's the lowest of the low. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now? So now our saddle looks pretty good. Always look for all these people are talking about string breakage. The string breakage happens right down here where you got a sharp edge on your bridge. This, this bridge here seems pretty good. Alright, so we're going to open up these D Darios and see what we got here. I mean, no, these, these are Excelsiors. Okay. Well, I can uh, come up with a way to make thousands of them, but that's coming. Trust me. Alright, so here's how here's how we're gonna start at the beginning here. So you take your string with your ball end on there. Just check make sure your tone bar slides on there. Slides on there perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is stick it down in the hole. You can immediately feel it. Slide it on the tone bar. It can't go nowhere. This is better than pins. Watch how fast you put these strings on here. You can't do that with pins. You're fighting the pins. Sometimes you got to fight to get them out, and sometimes you got to fight to get them back on. Now you want to pull this string out of the way so that you don't you don't cross strings. I've done that a couple times, and then we try to pull the tone bar up through there. So you just slide it on there. Keep it, just keep everything tight. Pull it up out of the way a little bit. Stick your string down in there. I still can't thank y'all enough. There's been so much. I don't know why this thing is blowed up like it is. I mean, I was hoping for that, but I didn't realize it would happen all of a sudden. And, and uh... So many people are looking at it, but uh, I do. I want to. I want to. Right here, where I'm doing this, I want to say something. I want to. Um, how do I say this? I made a critical error when I started this, and my critical error was that in my little pea brain, that I thought, man, if I could just get somebody. You know, if I live next door to Les Paul or live next door to, you know, they're not going name dropping, but I'm just name dropping. Just they're not. But I'm just saying, my 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 focus was kind of if uh, man, somebody famous had this in their guitar, they would tell everybody. And I had that mindset. I went to Nashville and talked to all them heavy hitters and. I called up Gibson, hey, I got this thing, going to make your guitar sound great, yeah, I click, you know, so that's, but my critical error was, that I corrected, was I came to you people, 
I don't need to tell some famous guitar player he's only going to buy one. I've told this to the world, and y'all are responding, and that is a blessing. And it it may, and then everybody that sees this is going, dude, I I get it. Everybody that sees this in person, that's why I couldn't understand why I wasn't getting many sales. Because everybody that sees this in person, they go, yeah, man, I I I, I see it. It's you know, it's been it's been done. In different ways, but nobody has perfected it and made it repeatable. You know what I'm saying? I've made this. I I, I come up with it. I got the right material. I got the right dimension. I got the right cost. I got the right shipping, and it's effective and it works. And if you break one, buy another one. They're only nine dollars. They cost. They cost about the same or maybe less than a new set of pins and they weigh less than pins so it my contention is and another thing they've been talking about this bridge ramping and this plate that you can put underneath your bridge to hook your strings in you're adding weight to the top if you add you know so many grams to the top it's going to keep it from vibrating my contention is the less you have on the top, the more it's going to vibrate. That's just the facts. Now, this is my little personal tone bar. I just, when I first try to make the tone bar tool, I, do, I, I use a wood burner, but it, it works. Okay, so you got your tone bar. Let's go back down here. We're going back to the... To the critical mass here. All right, so you got, your, you got all your strings on there. And then we're going to take the little tone bar tool with the hole in it. And we're just going to bend it up. And you don't got to bend it up to 90. Just bend it up. You just put that little bitty bend in it. And it keeps the strings from flying off. Like I said, when I was developing this, if you didn't have a tone bar with a bend in it, all the strings would fly off because you got to let go of it at some point. Okay, so now what you want to do... Just kind of look at your bridge and spread them out a little bit, because the because the uh, the strings are getting funneled up through this hole here, and they're just going to kind of line themselves up. See that? Just grab it like a ponytail. Okay, that, that that's just uh, I gotta run this video a little a little fast forward to get all the action. All right, so we're gonna do a little fast forward through the stringing. I might have said something profound, but probably not. And here we. And one more thing that I want to say about while I'm tuning this guitar, I'm talking over this video, is that. All these other applications are adding something to the guitar. 
my device adds something to the strings. This is a string accessory. I'm adding something to the strings. Those other devices are adding something to the guitar. You understand the difference? There's two types of woodworking equipment. One where the material moves through the machine and the other type is where the machine moves through the material. We're close. It's a time. different it's a different thing. Good measure. The I haven't tone put any elixirs on before. So this is going to be a different thing for me. The tone bar is a string accessory that 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 hooks to the strings. Those other methods are devices that attach to the guitar. That's a big difference. And I'll let this video run out. And uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, the reason I had to do it this way was because when you put a video on your iPad, more than an hour, it won't load onto okay, my PC. We're up, to, we're up to tune. Okay, now. The moment of truth. I'll start off with the thin pick, I'm dropping stuff, and I'm going to take this microphone down here. So you can't see the ball in, but see all the all the pins are gone. The bridge ain't pulling up. Oh, what I what I was also going to say is there's so much pressure getting pulled up. The tone bar actually pushes the bridge back down to the top. It, and I had a, a couple guitars where the bridge the bridge was coming up a little bit. And you put the tone bar on her, and it went down a little. It went down a little bit. You didn't have to, you know. It it keeps the bridge from moving any further. It's just the just the way it is. Okay, so there you have it. 
Thanks for watching. It's, it's been almost an hour. Time flies when you're having fun. I can't thank you people enough. You people, I don't know who you are, but there's there's 40,000 people, but that's almost a, that's a football stadium. That's a basketball. No, basketball arena ain't got that many people. But anyway, thank you for who's ever sharing this and, and making this happen. I'll get your orders filled. I'm working on it as we speak. I had to. I run out of uh, some material, so I stopped stop and do this little video because of all the the massive, massive uh, 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 looks and uh, comments. And I'll comment on the videos. I'm not going to dive into the weeds because I'm busy filling orders and and you know just uh, just trying to get this thing. You know, not trying to get swamped. Uh, I'm already swamped, but I'm, I can handle it for right now. And uh, uh, so, so thank you. I'm going to, like I said, uh, get off uh, reverb because the system's a little archaic and not good for small stuff. So get them on eBay, and I will put. My daughter got on me about this too. Put, I'll put the link in the in the description of this video that takes you right to the eBay. Let, uh, eBay page where you can buy these at. Okay, thanks for watching, and I call everybody that buys one of these a Tone Bar Pioneer. Join the Tone Bar Revolution. Get better tone. Get better contact. Um, it, it's a no-brainer. If you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not trying to push this on you. I'm just telling you what the facts are, and you make your own mind up and. And apparently a bunch of you have made your mind up, but thank you, thank you, thank you. You realize I got almost 700 subscribers. When I get 300 more subscribers, I'll get monetized. And I didn't get in this to make money on YouTube. I got in this to sell this tone bar to promote my patent and, and, and get this out there. And, yes, I hope, you know, some rich guy comes along and says, man, that's a great idea. How much you want for it? Well, you know, write me a check, and I want a dollar in perpetuity. So we'll work out the details. But anyway, thank you for watching. I got more con more content, and, uh, and I got other stuff that nobody's seen before that, you know, I got a lot of time on my hands, and I've done a bunch of good stuff, but I got some stuff coming it's not necessarily tone bar stuff, but I got some stuff in the future that I'm sure, since I got an audience that might appreciate it, I'll, I'll, I'll reveal that. But that's not no patents. This is just an idea that I did and I made, and then y'all can have fun with it if y'all decide to do it. Okay, thank you for watching, and a shout out to everybody that's, that's commented negative or positive. The fact that you're taking your, the time in your day to call me a dumbass, hey man, thank you. Okay, uh, goodbye, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.